Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Tower of God New World. Now in today's video, we have a huge update to the tier list. So as you guys can see, we have the overpowered tier. I just now added this tier for units like Kaiser, Hayera, uh, Yiwa, SR plus Yiwa, and Punisher in. And we also have, you know, brand new placements for these characters. And since we have the SSR Revolution Phase 2, pretty much every single SR unit received a major buff. So their placement on this tier list uh, pretty much changes. So the number one unit I want to talk about is Yiwa. So for Yiwa, you guys remember when I uh, said that Yiwa, the more floors you progress, the more her damage pretty much falls off. Now, the reason why I say that is because Yiwa, she is absolutely amazing for beginner players. If you are a new player, she will literally solo floors because her ultimate deals insane damage. But the reason why her damage, like her damage is just not that insane the more floors you climb is because enemies with shield. So when you're fighting against units like, let's say, Amigo Shards, for example, if I can actually find him. Uh, Amigo Shards, I'm pretty sure he is in C2. Yes, this guy right here. This guy, he just puts on shield back to back. It is annoying. And Yiwa is really, really weak when it comes to fighting against characters with shield. Nobody can tell me, and I'm I'm 100 honest right here. Nobody can tell me that Yiwa is godly against units who have shield. That is completely false. That is not true. Whenever Yiwa is going up against a unit who stacks shields on himself, she's just done. She can't do anything. She's completely useless in that situation. But when the enemy has no shield, and if the enemy team doesn't have Evan, I will say that Yiwa really insane. So. When you're going up against enemies with shields, I will say Yiwa, she just falls off to like C tier when you're going up against enemies with shield. That's why I always recommend you guys to use her with compressed track because compressed track pretty much allows Yiwa to do more damage because he's going to burst through enemy shields. If you don't use compressed track with Yiwa, her damage, she's just not going to be able to shred through the enemy's shield. So if you're not using compressed track with Yiwa, she just falls off to like C or B tier because her damage can't pierce through the enemy shield now i'm not saying that her damage is b tier or a tier no her damage is definitely s tier and above but what i'm saying is when you're fighting against an enemy with a shield her how can i say this her value definitely decreases to like b or c tier because she can't do anything to get rid of the enemy shield so that's one of the main reasons why i load her to s tier because uh, the more floors that you climb the more you progress through adventure mode the more you're going to go up against enemies with shield. For example, Meagle Shars, Flight Eric Mazinal. Flight Eric Mazinal is a pain to deal with in adventure mode because he is just extremely tanky and you will just cannot eliminate him. So her value definitely decreases against enemies with shield. Not saying that her damage is bad, no. It's just that her value against shield users is just really, really terrible. Now, I'm not going to talk about every single unit here on this tier list because it's going to take forever. It's going to take like two hours. I don't want to do all of that. But I'm going to talk about the key important characters. So we take a look at Vargarf. So Vargarf, his phase two is not really that crazy. And it's not even required because Vargarf is extremely tanky. He is one of the tankiest units in the game. Now, if you don't have Karaka, Vargarf definitely goes up to that S plus tier if you don't have Karaka. But the fact that, you know, Karaka is a thing, and if you do have Karaka at three blue stars and above, then uh, Vargarov definitely falls below to that S tier because Karaka is just way better. He has Provocation, which is very useful for the team. Um, Vargarov does have Provocation, but Karaka is like the number one tank unit that can pretty much activate it the most. So Vargarov still remains in that S tier. He is an amazing unit, though. I'm still using him. Absolutely meta. Now, another character I want to talk about is Blanc. So Blunt's phase two is actually going to be in that S plus tier. Like I feel like if you have Blunt at S plus tier, like not S plus, if you do have Blunt at Revolution Phase Two, S plus tier, because she can pretty much boost the damage for you know her allies when she heals them up by a ton. So that's pretty much you know helpful for Kaiser. And you guys know that Kaiser is like the most busted DPS unit in the game. So amplifying her damage. You know, it's a smart thing to do. So Blunt definitely goes up to that S plus tier if you have her at Revolution Phase 2. But if not, you still feel like she, uh, she still belongs in that S tier because she is a great healer. And I do feel like she's one of the best support units 
for blue element now moving on we have lero rose so this guy right here child lero i do feel like his potential and his value definitely increased 100 in this update and the reason why is because his phase two the fact that he can increase uh defense by 200 very very helpful for units like endorsey and the fact that he can increase magic pierce is very very good so he's increasing magic pierce he's increasing defense and he's also increasing basic attack damage so he's pretty much doing three things at once and he's applying a barrier to all of your allies he's just a very awesome unit overall so i do feel like lero definitely belongs in that s tier for sure even if you don't have his phase two he is still useful because of the basic attack damage increase and magic pierce increase so he's literally good for punisher in kaiser literally good for any magic damage type unit now moving on we have novik now novik um before you know kaiser came into the picture novik his value was definitely in like you know c tier or b tier and the reason why is because his survivability was terrible and we didn't really have a lot of basic attack damage dealing units but ever since kaiser came in Novik's value increased because he can increase uh, the basic attack co uh, I think his basic attack coefficient increase yes by like 200% which is crazy so he increases Kaiser's damage by a ton so I do feel like uh, Novik his value definitely increased because of basic attack he is just absolutely amazing against bosses using him in adventure mode not really because his survivability is not that insane but using him against bosses while you're using kaiser at the same time very very good these two are absolutely cracked together and if you're using a uh, lero as well because he buffs basic attack damage now we have the two new units we have in dorsey she's an s plus tier and the reason why is because she's tanky she's tanky as hell and there is literally no reason for me to even put her in you know s tier and below she is absolutely immortal the fact that she can increase her physical and magic resistance by like 50 percent you can pretty much go over 100 percent guaranteed if you put physical and magic resistance for her slot four and five for her ignition weapon so endorsey definitely going to be in that s plus tier really really good tank unit and she can also shred the enemy's magic resistance which is good for magic damage type units and of course we have ssr plus healing flame yua she's going to be in the overpowered category and the reason why is because she requires no investment you can literally have no copies on this character and she will literally kill your team when it comes to survivability and also buffing up your allies attack which is really good so you are definitely an overpowered awesome ssr plus healing unit and another major reason why she's an overpowered is because everybody can get her for free so definitely deserves that overpowered spot because everybody can get her for free and she works with low investment now, next unit we have is Purple Element and Dorsey. Now, this unit right here, I put her in A tier because her phase two, the fact that she can shred the enemy's uh, defense by 100%, very, very good. So, I will say for Endorsey, if you don't have her phase two, she definitely falls to that B tier. But if you do have her phase two, she definitely goes up to that A tier. That defense shred is insane. So she definitely deserves that um a tier spot i'm pretty sure she also increases her attack and defense by like 400 percent pretty sure i have to check again but her phase two is really really good now after that we have vicente now for vicente i put him in b tier now vicente he is a pretty good one shot unit he is literally the counter to kunadon like every single time i'm going up against kunadon in adventure mode i use vicente because vicente can pretty much teleport kunadon to your how can i say this he can teleport kunadon to your territory to your team's territory and he can just in immediately one tap um kunadon so i will say vicente when it comes to you know one shotting units who are absolutely painful to fight against vicente definitely is a valuable unit because kunadon he is annoying to deal with especially for using kaiser because kaiser the fact that she's doing projectile attacks kunadon just simply one taps her so vicente is definitely a solid answer to deal with uh kunadon so it definitely belongs in that b tier the reason why i put him in b tier is because of jinsung jinsung just completely dominates uh when it comes to one-shotting enemies now next we have here is child yuri now child yuri still remains in that s plus tier because 
if you have a lot of copies on her if you have three red stars and above she is insane so definitely um s plus tier a uh, unit next we have here is punisher in now punisher in is also going to be in the overpowered category because he's just tanky he is tanky he's overpowered my punisher is currently at three red stars and he's crazy like he is absolutely broken like he just doesn't die especially when you pair him up with iwa he's just broken so punisher in definitely belongs in that s plus tier not s plus tier overpowered tier and ha yuri as well ha yuri i do feel like for ha yuri uh, not ha yuri a uh, ha yura i do feel like for this unit she's just cracked like ever since we got the attack speed buff from her revolution phase two she's just completely busted i will say purple element is literally the strongest element in game period like that element is just completely busted because it is the number one element where you can literally use ssr characters only and you still clear adventure mode because you have hayura you have vargarf you have uh joaquin you can use kaseya and you also have a uh, vivi you use these characters they can pretty much solo adventure mode which is insane so Hayura definitely amplifies purple elements so she definitely uh, belongs in the overpowered tier now moving on we have data yurik now for data yurik he is in c tier and the reason why is because once again he's an ssr plus character and he needs so much investment and even if you have a lot of investment on his unit he's not that crazy because they tried to make him a dps tank unit which makes no sense so i do feel like he belongs in that c tier and the fact that we have hats donkey hats tank hats um there's just no reason for you to even use daddy yurik if you have hats so daddy yurik definitely belongs in that c tier and another unit i also want to go over is shalil now for shalil this character right here her phase two is actually pretty solid she gets 30 percent additional magic pierce which is really nice she can pretty much deal more damage with her phase two so i'm pretty sure she also steals energy which is pretty good as well so shalil definitely belongs in that a tier for sure and we also have yeon right here this unit she's a collab character i do feel like her value definitely increased because a green element is literally meta right now green element is very very powerful and the fact that she can shred the enemy's green element resistance by 60 percent very very useful the only reason why i have her in a tier is because she is a collab character so a lot of people don't have access to her so a tier now for Meliodas and Elizabeth, I will say their phase two is absolute garbage. And the reason why is because their phase two, it doesn't amplify their damage. It amplifies their survivability. For Elizabeth phase two, she's getting additional defense. And then for Meliodas, he's getting like max HP. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, like I can't remember specifically, but their phase two focuses on survivability. And I do feel like, you know, for DPS characters, Meliodas, if you haven't maxed out, he is absolutely insane if you haven't maxed out. And then for Elizabeth, she's still crazy. So giving her defense as a, you know, a DPS character doesn't make any sense. So she still belongs in that S tier. If their phase two was insane, like let's say 50% attack increase, they would definitely jump up to that S plus tier. But their phase two, it just focused on more survivability. It was pretty useless to be honest next unit we have is shibisu shibisu uh let's put you back up here shibisu is an a tier his phase two is actually pretty good because it increases his survivability and one of the biggest problems for shibisu is his survivability so i i will say the phase two was definitely worth it for sure so he definitely belongs in that a tier spot now lozelle so lozelle still belongs you know in b tier and the reason why is because Iwa SSR plus Iwa there is no reason for you to even use Lozelle because Iwa just completely dominates the healing meta so I will say for Lozelle the 80% you know additional green element attack really really nice but at the same time are you willing to sacrifice you know Iwa a unit who can pretty much keep the whole team alive and she can buff them as well to a unit who's going to die like let's say 80% of the time and the 80 percent you know green element attack increase you know won't like it is pretty good but it won't it's not really nothing compared to a unit that's going to keep the whole team alive 24 7. so i will say since everybody has iwa 
Lozell her value definitely uh diminished to like B tier for sure because you will just completely dominate the healing meta. But those are pretty much all the units I want to talk about. There are still some more, you know, characters that are changed. You guys can pretty much look at this tier list, pause the video if you want to. You can see a lot of characters who got lowered, got increased. Nare, for example, Nare, her phase two is insane. So I did increase her. But we have Kunron went down to C tier because you no know, Kaiser just she just dominates the meta. So there's really no reason to even use Kunron. And his phase two it's not that insane so he definitely dropped down to that c tier so there are a lot of changes we got lero say i still believe could is definitely strong um especially her phase two the fact that she can ignore the enemy's defense by 70 percent when her hp reaches 50 percent or below is it's, it's insanely cracked and she has like i think 120 percent additional crit damage or 130 i completely forgot but she did get a huge crit damage boost um, because of her phase two so kaseya definitely uh, belongs in that s tier evan kelts s tier because yes she does need a lot of investment and she is squishy with low investment so i will say uh, she is s tier and yeah those are pretty much all the units i wanted to go over like i said there are a bunch of other characters that i change but going over every single one of them is going to take a long time so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. And if you guys have any thoughts, any opinions, share them in the comment section down below. And I'll be catching you guys on the next one. Peace.